we have in this room, by invitation, some really bright experts, people who cover a broad perspective of what could be done in this space. And what we're looking to do is actually to make a difference. When we meet in these rooms, um, it feels as though there's a real sense of excitement and a real positive can-do attitude. Part of the challenge of it is, of course, how big neighbourhoods of the future actually is. Cognitive homes, data, new build, planning, uh, retirement, construction, uh, healthcare, social care, transport, internet of things, they're just some of the sub-sectors that neighbourhoods of the future could well break into. So Nesta, some of you may or may not know, is the UK's Innovation Foundation, having commissioned some research and done some uh, work with the Agile uh, Ageing Alliance. Uh, we focused much more on ageing around the smart home, around technologies that can improve the neighbourhood. Um, and that's what we're really here to do today, which is to think through where these problem areas might be and what we can collectively do about it. So our strategic direction at the minute is to look at uh, a number of things that are happening in residential amongst others and this idea that the, the ageing population uh, is actually the population. So it's not a distinct group, it's, it's everyone and we're all, we're all getting older. If we take UK, France, Germany and the Nordic market in Europe, the number one priority is social care and public housing. Very generally, Innovate UK is the government's UK innovation agency, for those that don't know. Um, we're responsible for um, helping grow the UK economy by supporting UK businesses. I had a meeting with a city about six months ago. They predict that by 2025, nearly 100% of their council's budget is going to have to be spent on the ageing population. One of the discussions we've had over the, the course of the last couple of years is uh, what is the repercussion of of, uh, of all this technology coming into society and how can we make sure that everybody is able to adopt it. Speaking as a biologist, believe in evolution and we are, tri we are a tribal society. And a tribal society, by its very definition, help each other. They are, they are sort of like, a, like an extended family. Now technology is something which of course provides tools. We all know from our Swiss Army knife to our smartphone. And it is perfectly possible that human care can be amplified by given, being given the right sort of tools um, to help their care receivers. Our homes, our cars, our relationships with the world give off a gigabytes of data, possibly even terabytes individually now, the latest estimates are, because every browse it has got lots of data fl flowing and this information is critical to the management of our health, our happiness, our care and all the rest of it. If we've got a sort of marketplace where data starts to have a value and where people are starting to feel comfortable about using their own data then you get over the hurdle of suddenly throwing a situation at somebody whereby people are wanting their personal data. Um, you start to get people into a transition phase of being comfortable in sharing their data because of services that they can get back. At the moment, the debate about information platforms is largely about sharing data between large, inefficient, failure-based organisations. And I personally am deeply frustrated because I want to be a digital first customer. I don't want to go to my bloody doctor. I want to be given the census. I want to be in your world now, and I know I could be, but I'm not even offered the choice. So the challenge for us is how are we going to make this happen? For Innovate UK, I think we need a consumer pull. And I have um, a desire that we move this age lens focus that we've always used to much earlier in the life course so that we're actively targeting the baby boomers, the ones with the responsibility and the ones with the money in their pocket. I think one of the really interesting discussions this morning was about the, the difference between innovation, as in coming up with new stuff and scaling, uh, than the difficulties of actually making sure that those innovations uh, take hold and, and, and make a real difference in the world. There's lots of new ideas out there, but not all of them uh, ever reach a, a sizable number of people. So I, I 
work a lot with PhD students, for instance, and in many cases we see that they come up with a great solution but there's no problem anymore. Which means that it's really difficult to get that solution in market because that's the first rule you learn in business, no problem, no solution, no problem, no money. But when it comes to technology and aging population, will we really allow that there's a certain aspect of society that is, uh, that is able to, to, uh, to afford it and others that are not able to afford it? Well, there's a couple of things that we, we need to consider in that. One is willingness to pay. There should be a willingness to pay on the, on the consumer end of things as well. Uh, that combined with entrepreneurship, it doesn't mean that it's only for profit, but entrepreneurship can also be done in not-for-profit organizations. And uh, all of this combined, uh, uh, the triple aim that we need to strive for, where it's the, the end user that gets better from the solution, whether the whole of society becomes better of that solution, and whether it will bring down costs. Well, one of the things I've, I've found today, because is the enthusiasm in the room from different areas. We've got SMEs, we've got people from large corporations like Tata. You know, I noticed um, DLA Piper, we've got law firms. It shows me there's a, there's a lot of vested interest in this area. Um, the, the, the challenge and the opportunity is large. The population is growing. It's a, you know, it's undeniable fact. And it's just seen great the opportunities here for all of us. You know, and if we can drive forward in this area and bring some innovation to it, I think, you know, everybody's going to win.